What is it like, Brenda, and, and you, Kurt, too, about seeing such a personal story yeah. being told like this for the whole world to see? Well, I feel vulnerable, and you know me well enough that that is not what I'm That's, comfortable being. Yes, that is um, not your default. It is not, and yet, you know, I really believe it's going to be worth that um, because we show the good, the bad, and the ugly about what real life is. And I think people relate to that. I really want a single mom sitting there watching it think, if she can do this, and she waited for someone to look at her that way, um, I, I hope that single mom waits. And I also hope that people that you know lose somebody, like I've lost people in my life, I hope that they just can take a deep breath and think, okay, I can get through it. There is another side. Um, you know, it, so much is happening in this world right now, even watching tornado footage in the movie. Yes. Um, you know, the, people are picking up and cleaning up all over the country. I mean, there's so many things to relate to. So even though I had to be vulnerable um, and share it all, I really do think it's going to make a difference in people's lives. So that makes me, you know, know it's worth it. How about you, Kurt? It, I mean, it's... You know, again, it, it it starts with people liking it. And once people like it, you take a deep breath. And, you know, so much of our journey, we I remember us kind of going, why? why? Why do we have to go through this? Why do we have to be here? I know Brenda, obviously, with some of the personal stuff. Why, why me? And you see that in the movie. And, you know, not that we still wanted to go through it or right now it's okay that we went through it. But you get to this point and you go, well, maybe this is why. Maybe we've got an opportunity here with this movie and our story to impact people and to encourage people and inspire and challenge people in different ways with where they find themselves right now. You mentioned it. How many people find themselves in an underdog role now mm -hmm. that never thought they would be here three years ago? Um, and so that's kind of our hope. And I, I'm excited about that. As much as you have to put stuff out there and, and hope that you know the people involved do the right thing, with the movie and they share the right story and people connect with it, we really do believe that this story has a chance to uh, to really impact people and touch people. Kurt and Brenda Warner here in person on the Rich Eisen Show. And to me, what makes a, a terrific sports movie is obviously there's gotta be a, someone to root for. Check that box. Right. Uh, then there's a, a love story. There's always gonna be a love story in there and, and check that box. And then there's frequently, uh, in sports movies, more often than not, a father-son story. And this movie checks the love story and the father-son story in the same box. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Did you Were you guys concerned to make Zach sort of a focus of this film from the very beginning when you saw the script? I, I was not concerned. I, I didn't think this movie could be made without that. Because what you see in this movie is, to me, he's the glue that breaks down the walls that both of us have put up, you know, where I'm going and, and how I see myself at that point in time in our journey and where Brenda's at and, and what she had been through at that point in time in her journey. Mm -hmm. You know, we both had like, you know, is this really going to work for both of us? And it was Zach that was the glue behind that. But to me, the bigger part of it, as you mentioned, a lot of sports movies, it's the son chasing after, you know, dad's you know, ghost or, or whatever, like, like, you know, I, I want that, you know, him to be proud of me and I want to show him that I could do this. What I love about this story is I was doing that with my son. I was chasing after what he was showing us and what the life that he was living and making him proud of me. And, and we were both inspired by him. You know, I think too often we feel like, well, I'm the older one. I'm the father. I'm the leader. I'm supposed to impact and inspire, you know, my kids. Mm -hmm. And that to me was what was really cool about this story is that it was Zach that was inspiring us throughout this, this whole journey. And, you know, we can be impacted and we can be inspired by anybody. It doesn't matter their age. It doesn't matter the role that we play. Um, when you look at the life of, of our son and what he's taught us, that to me was a crucial part of this movie that was different to me than most sports no movies. Doubt. But I mean, Kurt fell in love with my kids before he fell in love with me, and I get it. Like, they're easy to fall in love with, and I'm not. I wasn't. Um, I'm not easy. So when he fell in love with the kids and we'd continue to date, um, we'd get ready to break up over something. 
And he would say, well, I get the kids. And I think, no, the boyfriend I never. I really think I might have. Never. I, I, I no, really think no, I might have. No, so suddenly he wanted to work it out. And uh, we made up and, you know, life went on. But um, that's the love. That, that's the kind of man that I want to marry, you know, that falls in love with my kids the way he did. And keep in mind, he was 21 years old. What 21-year-old starts dating a divorced mother of two that's 25 years old, former Marine, cheated on, divorced, like he was asking for it. You know, he really was, but um, that's the kind of man I married. Yes, and a child with needs yes. as well, yep. you know? Yep. And and the boy who plays Zach in this uh, film is remarkable. Uh, remarkable. Just remarkable. And it's so, so it's just, again, it's just a beautiful thing to watch unfold. Kurt and Brenda Warner here on the Rich Eisen Show. Another uh, aspect of a sports movie uh, that makes it terrific, checks the box, is Dennis Quaid is in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no I mean the, what a cast. makes it better. What a cast. You oh, get yeah. Dennis Quaid as Vermeil. Yeah. Was, was, you know, was Vermeil as open? I mean, who plays Mike Martz in the movie? Chance Kelly. I mean, Chance Kelly. Was Phenomenal. Mike, was Mike as really uh, opposed to your presence there as he is uh, in the film, or do they play that up a little bit? No, he, uh, he, he was. And, yeah, I mean... Uh, the stuff in the movie, you know, is all obviously, as it says, based on true story. Yes. And yeah, I mean, you know, I can't tell you exactly what happened behind the scenes. Yes. But a lot of that is my interpretation based on my interaction with Mike Marsh. So, yes, yeah, so a lot of the stuff you see in the movie uh, that checks every box of, of what really happened is, you know, Mike really trying to push me because, you know, here's a guy coming from grocery store and arena football that nobody knows anything about. Yeah. And he's never going to get to see me between the lines until I'm between the lines with the ball in my hands. And so um, his goal was to go, let me see if this guy can hack it with as much pressure as I can put on him every single day. I mean, just to kind of go beyond that, I remember doing an interview about week four of the season, and yeah. it was Marshall and Isaac and Tory and and all the the skill players on that team. I remember the interviewer asking them, "Okay, did you guys know Kurt was was going to be this good?" And it was Marshall, I think, that responded, and he's like, "We actually thought Kurt was terrible because every day in practice, all he did was get yelled at. You know, all we heard was him getting yelled at time and time again." So. You know, none of us had any idea that he was any good because that's what we heard every single day. And so that was uh, very true to form to <sighs> to what I felt like and what I was going through in those moments. What was it like for you when he was going through that magic carpet ride? Well, I mean, Kurt so easily, easily liked and he would call and say, this man hates me. Hmm. And I think, what is wrong with that man? Because <laughs> nobody hates him. I mean, it, you just can't. And so I thought something's going on that Kurt's not seeing, mm -hmm. you know, and this whole time watching him play football and me not being a sports fan or a football fan, you know, it was all like watching him um, try and just get that opportunity. So if this was the man that mm -hmm. was going to stop that, I mean, it just didn't make sense how he couldn't like him. So I thought maybe he isn't that good. You know, maybe this guy <laughs> sees that he isn't that good. So for now to understand and look back and you see it in the movie for the reason why he treated him like that, yes. you know, to to bring up, um, you know, who what kind of man he really is and what kind of player he was going to be. Now it makes sense. Um, but during the time, I thought, who is this Who is man? this Mike Marks yeah. man? Yeah. And, and I think that's the part that I love about the movie, maybe the best, is that you know, there were different characters in the movie that when they're first introduced, you're like, oh, I don't like this guy. But as the movie progresses, you come to understand everybody's role in getting me to where I ended up. Mm -hmm. And that's what this movie is so much about, is that it's not about the, you know, where I ended up, because everybody knows that story. It's about how I got there and, and who shaped me along the way from Zach to Brenda to, you know, my, my college coach. And there's some of my high school coach mixed into my college coach. Um, and then Mike Martz and, and Dick Vermeil and all those people mm. that had to step in in their role because without their role, you know, even at times when we didn't like their role, uh, yeah. their role was key in shaping the person that, yeah. uh, that I would become. Well, it's interesting that you would say that, Kurt, because um, 
the guy who plays Mooch is a very handsome man, yes. and yeah. I don't know, you know, he's, he's known. He's known in my my family as yes. good looking Mooch. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's how that's how uh, that's how everybody references him. It's like, it's hey, family. is good looking Mooch gonna be there? Is good Mooch Mooch, good looking Mooch good coming looking to the Mooch. Good looking Mooch. So really I'm just saying that's no. I, I told oh, you guys like that you know he was, you he was a looker back in the day. He was a looking that, guy though. Guy back I in mean, the day. How did that? He's happen. easy to look at, isn't he? He's easy to good look looking at. Good-looking Mooch. Yeah. Good looking I mean, you, could, you could have turned him into, you know, and nobody really yeah. needs to know that he's that good-looking or right. used to be. Like, yeah. that was a, that's a casting choice that I, I it thought you It was a good casting choice. Your, I thought was, you could have put your foot down. Good, I thought that's that's that was a I'm good saying. casting choice. You know? I mean, and okay. again, even guys like Mooch, as much fun as we have with Mooch, I love in, in short role in the movie, but I love the role in the movie because it's, it's so key to this whole thing. I mean, me getting cut and, and that scene there, I think, is a beautiful scene because uh, you don't see very many pro athletes do what, what I did in that moment. Um, but the dialogue between Mooch and I is that. Is that know, how accurate was that? Because uh, we, we bust so many stones about this on yeah, game day. Yeah, that morning. wasn't fully accurate. It okay. wasn't Mooch that actually cut no, me and specifically. Made a decision, yeah, right? And I mean, so we didn't necessarily have that conversation then right but we've had that conversation since then okay and you know as mooch always goes no you cut you you know i didn't cut you you cut you and there's it's 100 percent true crazy. that i did cut me you know that yeah. i wasn't ready hmm. for that moment that yeah. i needed more seasoning and timing yeah um and so even like a moment like that that you're, you're bombed and you know again we always blame mooch for it um it was something that i needed at that point in time to develop into the player that I would be when I when I got back with the Rams. So all of that stuff, and again, there's truth in all of that. It's just how and when and and how it played out to uh, to tie it into the movie, which which I think they did beautifully. Wow, it's so great. I'm yeah. so happy for you guys. Thank I you. really am because it is a beautiful <laughs> movie. And it's so well representative of you and who you guys are as a couple and as a as a, a you know parenting group, which you yeah. are together. You know and. and and you know, uh, um, and it ties everything all together. You know, Treasure House, which you have going on, built yeah. in in the um, in the Phoenix area, mm-hmm. uh, where folks like Zach can mm-hmm. come and live self sufficient lives. Yeah. And your guys' success as a couple and as a, a, a family unit yeah. has led to that. I honestly, it gets me all choked up. What does your family think about this movie? Uh, you know, um, we have seven kids, and yeah. When they all watch it, um, Kurt and I are kind of shocked because, you know, they tease us like all kids tease parents. They're so tired of the stories. They've had to hear stories. Yeah. You know, we walked uphill to school, you know, in the snow, all those kind of stories. Mm-hmm. So when they watch it, they seem to appreciate us, you know, a little bit more. Like, I didn't realize that when you mm-hmm. told that story that yeah. that's what it felt like. That The movie does that for them. And, you know, to to know that Treasure House, which is a residential facility for adults with intellectual disability, that's my baby because I realize that's what we're going to leave behind. Mm. You know, we're leaving behind a place that is just the first of hopefully many that give these young people a full life. And I'm raising seven kids. I want them all to have a full life. It's all going to look differently for each child. But he deserves it as much as anybody else. So that is my honor to, you know, be able to say we put our mark on that on that place. And we need them all over the country because there's other parents, you know, sitting in other states going, what about my child? Yes. What about what? A, what's my future um, as a young adult with disability? Where are my peers? Where is my community? Where is my tribe? And so. That's our calling, and we know it, and our kids know it, that that's what we're going to leave behind. Yeah, I mean, it's been, you know, the, the best part of it is is watching our kids see the movie and be able to see us in a different light. It, it was also the challenge of the movie because, um, you know, for instance, like my dad. My dad's not really a part of this movie, even though he's an unbelievable part of our lives and our kids' lives, and we have a great relationship. but. That wasn't the story that we went down because obviously I was raised in a single uh, parent household with my mom and the connection with Brenda. And so, um, you know, it's the beautiful part of it. And sometimes it's the tough part is you don't get to tell the whole story. You've got to figure out the right story. And uh, the great thing at the end of the day is I believe we got the right story and a story that's really going to connect with people. You did, man. You did, too.
Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.